the shrooms helped you, you said? Mm -hmm. How? It let me know how sad I was. I had no idea. Like, Did you want to, are you glad you found out? 100%, yeah. Did it help with the anger? Like the ecosystem? Oh, I had a two week period of euphoria, like 10 days. So you do Ten like, a, do you know how much would, you did, where you did it? Like how much, what was the situation? I don't, like most people, I didn't know what the doses was. I just yeah, took yeah. them. I told this story on my last special where it was like, yeah, I, I, it started off silly and goofy. Then all of a sudden, like this darkness came in. It was just this, and it was like, it was a profound sense of sadness. There wasn't a beginning or an ending. It just was, and it was undeniable. And I couldn't figure out. I was like, what is this? Is there something going on with me and my wife? So, you know, you just sit there as you're tripping, you're like checking in and you're like, any answers from the universe? No. Something going on with the kids. I know I love my kids. I know they love me. No, that's not it. And then I was just like, all right, what is this? And the second I said that, like the answer comes into your head. Like that's the amazing <laughs> things about mushrooms that make me believe in something else and yeah. a higher power and stuff. And uh, that was the line of my life. Oh, this is how you felt as a kid. And I always, I was of the, you know, the so-called, like, I'm awake now walking around. I was of the belief that what happened to me as a kid didn't bug me and that uh, it was actually a good thing because I'm tough yeah, and I'm not a pussy and all of that shit. And um, then I realized, oh, that was all wrong. That was what I became so I could deal with whatever was going on. And then that was just a an avalanche it kind of just when i get an answer to something i don't deny it i just kind of go with it answer in that in that being an example what's another example you suck at this right and then i don't stubbornly try to keep going yeah. with it like that's how i ended up figuring out what i was supposed to do in life like when i tried something and the information came back that i wasn't good at this yeah. i was just like oh, I, I just i didn't have the ego to be like Yes, I am. Because there's like things you want to be good at. Yeah. And also when you're good at, say, comedy, it's way different than something you're shitty at. Like I used to golf until I did comedy. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to fucking do that. If yeah, I can be this good at something and that good, it's like, that's shitty. It's a waste of time. It's a total waste of time. Like I, <laughs> I didn't find it relaxing. I just found it like it was just thwarting. It was hurting my feelings. Yeah. I, I have a funny relationship with golf. Like yeah, I, I, I like yeah. I like the hang. Yeah, and and I also I get a kick out of how seriously people take yeah. that absolutely ridiculous stupid activity. Yep. Unless if it actually helps you, if it actually like if that's the place you need to go. There's a lot of people that you know. There's a lot of men that are not in happy marriages, and they didn't marry easy women. Now that's not a popular opinion out there. The popular opinion is that if there's a problem in the relationship, the, the man is the problem. Yeah. And it's just not true. No. It's just, it's, it's probably even, you know what I mean? It's, but women are stealth overbearing. It's not mm -hmm. like they're <laughs> taking the belty and yeah. beating you down and stuff, but it's, it's, it's more, uh, chemical warfare. <laughs> Yeah, it's also yeah, it's radioactivity. Yeah, it's it's, it's like it's, it's invisible. Mists. Yeah, yeah, carbon monoxide. Yes, emotional carbon monoxide. Yes. Like, and you, so these guys they just are managing a difficult. Situation. They're like a game manager quarterback, and they're just handling, just trying to stay in the fucking game. And they get to the golf course, and they just get to like just leave that alone. You um, get to be like a full person. Instead of like, I feel like a lot of guys in marriages are And like, I have to tell you something right now. That is pro the worst fucking thing that you can do to somebody is if you're in a relationship with somebody and they feel like they cannot be, you just said be a full person. Yeah, just, I used to say, I, I don't want to be a guest in my own life. That's how bad relationships make you feel. Like I'm like a guest in my own experience. I have to run it through you or it has to be okay for you. That was the thing I said to you a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, like, like, like punch a clock. Yeah, like what am I allowed to be? Instead of yeah. like, I was dating a girl and you had jokes in your act that I wanted her to see because I didn't know how to tell her. <laughs> and she, I guarantee you, she, you know, unless she was a, okay, first of all, what I was saying was correct. Let's start there. Yeah. And then if she was mature enough or wired in a way that she could take information that act, if she could actually uh, admit being wrong, yeah. which isn't something that some people could do. Some people can, some people can't do it. But if you were somebody 
that can't say that, you know what, I was wrong. Like, my wife can do that. And that just goes so many miles with me. Yeah. Because it's, it's like, I'm not sitting here saying I'm a, pers- a perfect person by any stretch of the means. I'm just saying, you did that. It made me feel like this, that I was fucked up. And if she can be just like, all right, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. And, and it goes away. I know. It it's goes un- away. And it's just you like, get all right. so, you're like, I fuck with you. I like you so much for that. I had my girl now, uh, she, she did something. It wasn't even that agreed. It was like, eh, we talked it out and she goes, you know, most of the relationships I've been in, the guy was the fuck up. So having that attention on me that I made the mistake, she, my girl said, I had the thought, wait, is this what guys go through in relationships? <laughs> and I was like, fucking yeah, all the time. You I think that being reminds a rela- me of. Because that's beautiful and also annoying. Like, wait, could we ever be in the I, wrong? <laughs> you know, that reminded me one time I was doing this. I'm not going to say it, but I did somebody's podcast. And remember the alt scene, wherever the fuck that mm-hmm. went? And he was like, you know, I was talking with another comedian friend of mine. We were like, you know what? There's alt hack. There is alt hack. It's just like, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you guys aren't as good as you fucking think you were. Like, they were so... Up their own asses. Yeah. It was such a weird scene because it was created by club comics, some of the best comics of a generation. Beasts. Yeah. That earned the right to stretch out. Yeah. But then accidentally they created a scene where someone could just start in this comedy womb of no heckling and, and you're the crowd and the crowd's you. Yeah. Rather than going up there going, look at these fucking animals. How am I going to relate to them? Um, that just always like struck me as fucking hilarious. Like just that epiphany. You're like, wait a minute. We have human faults also? Yeah. And you have cultural. If we all just same... sort of just all do the same eight rooms and hang out with each other, it all you kind of disappears up its own ass after a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Like, remember what happened in the club scene? Mm-hmm. Did you ever notice? What's up with this? This yeah. guy knows what I'm talking about. The yeah. same thing is going to happen to your scene. It's, it's part of every fucking scene. Like, this is new. This is amazing. This is great. This is the apex now the yeah. industry figured out how to make money of it. Now, now, now there's a formula, and that, and then it just yeah. dies. That's how it all goes. Yeah. The the thing I want to get back to was the the idea of like being good at something, and then making that because it is people probably whenever people do those Q and As, like hey, people have questions. The question in my experience is always like, hey, how can I be you without having to struggle? For 10, 15 years. And it's like, there's no way to not. Str- that's. Yeah. That you is. can't. With technology. No. Yeah. The level of exposure that. You, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But you're not. I, it's not going to last long. I don't know about that. I, I think it's just. I think it's changed. I am actually excited for younger comics that they don't have to go through. That, that the, the level of power that they have is really cool. Is really cool. And, and like, you know, we went through a different process. But I feel like we. There was just as many bad comics versus good comics or great comics. I think that has always been the same. And I think it's just all how you apply using the technology. It's just it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be a different thing. I mean, it was a different thing when I showed up. Like when uh, and my generation, the 80s generation, created the whole club scene. And before that, like guys like Leno and those guys, they had to go up in front of like strippers Strip clubs, and yeah. jazz musicians and stuff. Opening for fucking fucking Miles Gore. Davis. Jay yeah. Leno told me open for Miles Davis in like some jazz club in uh, like north of Peabody. Yeah, Seinfeld and stuff. would open for like Gloria Gaynor. Jerry yeah, one time was, said no one wanted to see a Jew. It's like a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> like, like yeah, that's no, how people was, fought in the seventies. Yeah, like, you had to be like in the is, Catskills or something. Yeah, like what is this Jew? Would what? Yeah. So the I, I I would imagine that there was comics from Jay's generation that went through all of that stuff. Looked at us like Jesus Christ. You you actually have a place where people go specifically to see stand up comedy. Like I had to be wedged between. Yeah. You know, yeah. I guess it Two does get easier. Their titties, so. I, yes, I would no, argue no, that you changes. got better. I think it changes. It changes. I don't think it's any easier today. I just think it changed. I don't think it's easier. I don't. I think there was something positive about uh, you and Patrice and Norton and Voss and Kevin Hart and D- like you guys being at the cellar together. All of us assholes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like you were making, <laughs> but like you were. 
ridiculously it, it, in, mean to yeah, each other right, and everyone yeah. around us. We know that now, like looking <laughs> back. But you, some of you made it like so, like it made you better and different in in a way that I think was like, I'm glad that you went through that. I didn't, I wasn't really around it, but I could see it from afar. It was an, it was an asshole think tank. Yeah. We just sat there and rather than thinking up scripts. Stupid. We thought about dumb things, <laughs> mean things to say to each other. Shirts, attacking shirts, hate crimes on shirt. Guys, oh, it's a fucking, yeah, this no. fucking shirt. Oh yeah, the, I had. Um, you just said we have a whole section of your closet of shit that you just couldn't wear down there. Condemned, anymore. yeah. There was stuff that I bought and then I lost the courage to wear it. That's why I've always just black. I always dress like Malcolm Young. I just feel like that's the least amount of shit you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you and Patrice had the fucking. I I don't know if you. I'm sure you've told the story, but I heard it like secondhand. The thing about standing together after a show. And whoever got the most U twos, it was Good like, show. oh yeah, U two. Uh, oh no, no. But then, then, then we ranked them. Yeah, it was when you after comedy shows when you're you're all the comics stand together. The best, the most popular comic of the night. The crowd, most of the crowd will come up and go like, "You were great, man." And then they'll see the other person there. Oh, you and, too. And they go, "Oh, you too." And it was like a ranking of how many U twos you got. U two. And then the worst one, the worst one uh, was uh, stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> in the stick black with. version is you did your thing you did your thing up there that's kind of stick with it like i'm not going to say like it was good No, you did your thing was was you had a good set yeah but there was also like if you didn't really they'd still give you like you did your little thing maybe they'd throw up that sounds female female like that word little yeah <laughs> you know a little thing you do uh i never found a um there was no happy medium. There was either you you killed or you didn't. I remember getting off Nick's comedy stop. One time having a bad set. <laughs> and you just have to walk. What sucked about Nick's is if you had a bad set, you had to walk through the crowd. We just call it the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. so you had to walk through. I remember walking through and hearing the host trying to get the crowd back and not listen, wanting to look at anybody. And was like, you know. Because you've just gotten off. Yeah, and bombed. And yeah. bombed. And like it was sparsely populated with people and i remember this black guy just yelling he'd go, come on red you can do better than that <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those things you know i still had a day job and i didn't have another show for like five six days so for six days in my head at the dental office playing on a loop is come on red you can do better than that <laughs> God damn it. That's and then so people fun. at work would be like, you're all right? Is everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's good. Yeah, just Come on, man. didn't get sleep last night. <laughs> God damn it. That's so fucking funny. Do you, but you, I would say you were better. You're better off overall for having experienced that. No? Well, it, it, no, everything in life, all the pain that you have in life, it just makes you, if you survive it, it yeah. makes you tougher. If you don't give into it, you know, that's the thing that you learn on the way is like, you can make the choice. You never run to people, you know, everything was going great. Then this happened. It's yeah. just like, well, that happens to everybody. Yeah. You should just, you got, you got to use that as, a, as, as part of your story to get in there. But if you make, you, you have the power to be, to let that thing take you out. Like I saw, I, I, you know, new comedians that, you know, came to New York or came to LA, you know, and they got their talking to by Jamie or fucking Lucian back in the day. Those guys ripped everyone a new asshole. Yeah. But some people just took it to heart and couldn't get over it. And it's just like, yeah, I used to talk to me like, fuck those guys. Yeah. Fuck those guys. Well, that's what I was going to say is that thing Especially where you- Especially you, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah. Did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.